probably as some of you know at the end of the 2021 i asked the community for the help on testing the new kind of the filter i was working on the idea was simple because the h7 uh, cpus and the h7 flight controllers has so much spare time when they are not doing anything really useful uh, because they are so fast they are able to run the normal flight controller operations like the stabilization in like no time we might be able to use them for something heavy for example for the much better and much more effective filtering and the general idea was that i wanted to try to use the fourier transformation and the inverse fourier transformation to be able to have very precise very effective attenuation of any kind of the gyro noise the idea was simple every time we are getting a new sample from the gyro we store it in the buffer then every each cycle we run the fast fourier transformation on the buffer this by the way, the fast Fourier transformation converts the time domain of the gyro signal into the frequency domain. More or less, it's converting the signal, as we know, as the sinusoid, like the, the wave uh, of the signal, into the set of the frequencies of the sine waves. And then, because it converts this to a set of the sine waves, of the different frequencies, for example, 0 Hz, which is the DC component, 50 Hz, 100 Hz, 150 Hz, etc., etc., etc. If on the time, if on the frequency domain you will zero some of those components, you basically are running the low pass filter. The idea is simple and in theory it should be worked. So the idea was that it would be working like that. Every time the gyro data, data enters the filter, there is the linear buffer that stores the data. Then every cycle on the uh, linear buffer we run the fast Fourier transformation and this converts a signal like that you can see the main component uh, the flight component is the you know going up and down slowly and there is very distinctive high frequency vibration because uh, by the way the motor that was used to record this uh, the signal had a banded shaft i think and when we run this data through the Fourier transformation, we see that there is a lot of signal with the low frequency, some with the middle frequencies, and over here, above, let's say, 150 Hertz, we have only basically noise, which is over here, this high frequency oscillation of the basic signal. Then, if on such a signal we would zero the frequencies above the cutoff, and then run the inverse Fourier transformation, which basically converts the frequency domain into the time domain and reconstruct the signal, we would get something like that. This is the theory and uh, my assumption was this would be working great because uh, this is the input signal and after running this set of the operation, we have this signal. As you can see, the attenuation of the noise was massive uh, and the signal looks much nicer. Maybe not perfect, but comparing this to this, yeah, there is a difference of how this looks like. And up until this very moment, everything looked just perfect. However, however, it turned out that, well, um, well, there is a problem. To some extent, the filter was doing, like some of the experiments of some of the people uh, from the community showed, was doing just fine. And the attenuation level that the filter was able to achieve was really super impressive. However, however, because uh, the essential part of the filter is that we have to run the Fourier transformation on the quite long buffer because we want to have a decent resolution of the Fourier transformation because not only we are bound by the Nyquist frequency which the sampling rate depends of how which frequencies we can uh, analyze on the signal but also the Fourier transformation one more time cuts this in half at the 4 kilohertz uh, the gyro was processed the buffer had to be at least 46 elements and uh, 46 elements with the 4 kilohertz sampling that gives us how much uh, 16 milliseconds for the 
data to go through the whole the buffer. And this unfortunately means that the filter had, uh, well, well above the acceptable delay. This is a beautiful example where we can measure the delay of this filter. The top graph is the input signal to the filter and the bottom graph is the output signal of the filter. And by checking what's the difference of the peak of the input signal and the peak on the output signal, we see that there is approximately 8 to 9 milliseconds, which by the pure coincidence is exactly half of the total length in the milliseconds of the 64 elements at 4 kHz of the buffer. And this, unfortunately, means that filter was absolutely not usable. It was causing so much delay on the gyro signal that every time you try to open the throttle and to fly slightly faster than just the hover, the quad was just going into the constant oscillation. Why? Because the phase delay was so high that the whole PID loop and the control a feedback was going out of sync. If you add 8 milliseconds of the delay between the input and the output on something that basically requires us to run at, let's say, 2 or 3 milliseconds stops, we are going into the situation when it just is not flyable. Okay, maybe not flyable is too strong of the word, but uh, the video recorded what by one of uh, the community members showed that it was flyable, but uh, no, 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 so absolutely not. This is why it was not an experiment, but I will rather not uh, pursue this uh, idea right now because of the limitations of the processing. And unfortunately, even if the attenuation is super amazing, but the phase delay uh, introduced by the filter is so high, then unfortunately it's a no-go.